And uh, now it is my great pleasure to introduce our speaker. Linda Blankenship is the executive director of the Lincoln Theater. Um, that's a special place in this town for a hundred years. It's spanning all of our generations. It's been some place that we all love. Who, who liked anything better than a movie and a soda at the Sugar Bowl? That was kind of the best times ever. Um, she focuses most of her attention now on the Lincoln Theater, raising money and awareness for what she calls our national tre treasure. And um, she's guiding the renovations and getting ready for a big celebration of the century at the Lincoln Theater. Linda Blankenship. Well, thank you. Um, I'd like you also, while you're in a clapping mood, to clap. I'm going to say two names, and after each name, I'd like you to clap. Okay, ready? John McClain. The Mouse and Lions Club. Because if it weren't for those two names, we'd be looking at a beautiful parking lot, um, right where the theater stands. Um, anyone remember John McClain? One, 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 somebody here is related, but we we are on a great the, the great Maslin hunt. We need you to go through all your old photographs and see if anyone can find a picture of John McClain because there don't seem to be any, and he was a very important man in Maslin. So we'd love to put a plaque up in the theater honoring his foresight because in 1915 the first real movie as we know it came out, and his theater was already there waiting to show it. That was Birth of a Nation. We won't be showing it, probably. Uh, possibly in the museum part of the theater one day we'll show it. It's, uh, America has changed since 1915, and that movie's no longer appropriate. Does star our borrowed celebrity, Lillian Gish, and her sister. Um, but it, it's the first movie that was ever of any length, and they thought, ah, people will sit. It's a three-hour movie. They didn't think people would sit that long. Sure enough, they did, and D.W. Griffith took off, and when you're sitting over there at a three-hour movie, you have Birth of the Nation to thank for that. Um, we are about to celebrate our 100th birthday. We are. <laughs> it's right there. <laughs> we are about to celebrate our 100th birthday with a big party. Uh, uh, the actual birthday of the Lincoln will be November 23rd. Sadly, that's a Monday. So we'll be celebrating on the 21st, so that's a Saturday night. We have a magnificent concert planned. We have a VIP event for anybody that's willing to spend $50 for a ticket, and it'll be $200 worth of fun that will happen beforehand. There will be a speakeasy is reopening at the Lincoln. I like to think it was there once, so I'm reopening it. Uh, over that hundred years, there's been a lot of alcohol issues around, and we have one today with some people in town. But um, we're going to have a speakeasy, and it will be a complete experience. We're recreating the time, and the date for that will actually be 1928. So we hope you'll all come. But if you don't want to do that, we'll have a concert in the theater that will celebrate 100 years of music. We're bringing in two international stars. Um, we're adding some Maslin talent to it. It'll be a great night. Those tickets will be $20. Now, if you're somebody who has attended a Friday Night Live show, and I've always told you to hold on to your tickets, you bring me one of those tickets and you'll get in for $10 for having supported the theater in the past. Um, so, and then, when that's all done, we're gonna have an afterglow party back in the speakeasy, it'll go on until we can't dance anymore. Uh, and that'll be dessert and champagne and a great, you know, so it's a quick time. And if you did everything, it's going to cost you $100, which is $1 for every year the theater's been open. So you can pick and choose. You don't have to do it all, but it'll be really, really a fun night. And on the Friday beforehand, uh, a group called Hey Monet, who's very popular, a music group locally and internationally now, They've uh, volunteered to organize an all-stars of rock 
concert for Friday night, which will also be celebrating the birthday, and that will be ten dollars. So we're we're hoping to have something for everyone. So now, if you're going to have a question, would you raise your hand? I know I just started talking, but I need to know how much I can talk. <laughs> oh, no questions. <laughs> I like you. Well, if you come up with one. Was somebody here, give me like a five minute warning or a two minute warning or something. You just hold up how many minutes. Um, I'm going to go back to 1915. And as you're looking at these pictures um, on the wall and on the table, I'll start with this one. This is the front page of the Independent. When the building, how front of proposed new theater to be called Lincoln will look. Now, when you look at that, you will realize, yeah, you can, you can, I forgot, you're the wrestling girl. <laughs> um, you, you'll notice that it still looks the same on the outside, doesn't it? Does anybody know what was there before the Lincoln? I bet Margie does, can't talk. Who, what? A house, yes, but a very important house. It was James Duncan's home. And for some reason, and it looked a lot like the you know, the new home he built, but at some point he moved up the street into what is now our library. Um, so everybody was very excited about this because John McClain was building the most expensive theater ever built in Ohio. Now when we say theater, that's including opera houses. You know, there weren't movie theaters. Nobody had done that. But of all the theaters ever built in Ohio, the Lincoln was the most expensive. And it's thanks to his good judgment that it's still sitting there. Because what happened, it, what happened to most movie theaters? Anybody know what was the number one cause of them not being here anymore? Fire. They caught fire. If you've been to the Lincoln, you'll see we have a projection, an old projection machine that when we installed digital, we brought down for people to look at. And you will see that once upon a time, the only illumination available to get the picture down from the projection booth was a flame. It was ignited in the projector. Those projectors are called carbon arc projectors. There was a piece of carbon uh, cotton, looked like uh, what you put in a lantern, you know, if you were burning a uh, oil lantern. They would light that, and then the movie, made of very, very flammable uh, nitrate, would pass over the spool right in front of the flame. And that was the only illumination they had to get that flame all the way down to the movie screen, which in the Lincoln was farther than anybody had tried to send it yet. So the way they made that work was the first screen in the Lincoln was made of gold, because that was the only substance reflective enough to make it work. So uh, we don't know where that went, if it's in your basement. Because <laughs> it's in somebody's basement. <laughs> uh, we'd love to have it back. Um, anything else that ever came out of the Lincoln, we'd also like to have that. But that Mr. McLean said, okay, I'm going to do this. Now, what we understand is he told his wife that he was spending $100,000. Uh, that's 1915, and that's a whole lot of money. But if he shops the way I do, and report to my husband the way I do, um, I'm going with 200000 <laughs> Whatever the price was, it was worth it. He bought the best of everything so the theater would not burn down. They laid, the walls are 26 inches of solid brick. Belt and brick. Still, the theater is still as square as square can be. It has not, you know, you would think a 100 year old building would be sagging. It's not. Um, the floors were laid of wood, of course. And then they concreted the tops and the bottoms of the floors. The huge steel beams that are everywhere in the building were also coated in concrete. 
Because if your floors and your beams can't burn, your theater will not burn down. Um, the other unusual thing they did is they only used mahogany wood. And mahogany wood is almost impossible to burn. Uh, now at 100 years, it's almost impossible to put anything into. You know, it's... <laughs> um, so the best of everything, the interior, and I, ha I brought some little, um, you can look at these when you come in. They're just some pictures that someone found and brought to me. We had no pictures of the interior of the theater in 1915. Um, so we just kind of had a guess. I don't know what they had when the Lions started redoing it. They may have had some pictures, but I haven't seen any. This, this little thing has, um, it says, the Lincoln Theater, Maslin's Modern Place of Amusement. Now, Marky, can you tell me when the centennial, Maslin's centennial was? It was 1926. 20, 26, that's what I thought. So these pictures were taken in 1926. And there are two in, or three interior shots. Um, the theater was all gussied up for the celebration. I suppose all the mass was. There's a larger one over there of that outside picture. But if, if you look at this, you will see the interior is almost identical today to what it was then. Amazingly identical. Now, the theater was built without a stage. It was built only to show silent movies. But in 1926, the Shine Brothers bought the theater, I think, and uh, they decided, well, let's do some uh, live, let's do some vaudeville. Apparently, now they needed some vaudeville. So they built a small stage uh, and added on the dressing rooms, which we have just totally, because the Shine Brothers did not have the same feeling <laughs> for spending money that John McClain did. And they did not build the dressing rooms to the same high quality. And so for the last, since I've been there, which is eight years, it's flooded in there every time it rains. It's underground. You know, half the theater's underground when you're sitting in there. When you're underground, the theater doesn't leak. But the dressing rooms did. It turned moldy, they were horrible. Um, and an embarrassment, and they didn't smell good. And so we've just finished a, well, we, we raised uh, $350,000 for renovations. So we've just finished rebuilding the back of the theater and those dressing rooms are now stunning. We have a shower in the dressing rooms at the Lincoln. It is now actually possible to live there. <laughs> Which people thought I was doing, but actually. <laughs> but my husband better stand his toes for, you know, who knows. But at any rate, it's now just first class, and um, we've had people there since who've been to Broadway or, you know, um, Lois Giacomo, who knows everything about theater in our area, walked in and said, oh, Players Guild, eat your heart out. <laughs> and, yes. um, so anyway, we're making r repairs to John's dream, but in my opinion, John's dream is still intact as he dreamt it. So um, we have more things happening. And when you come to the 100th birthday party, you're going to see a beautiful new entrance inside, a new carpet and painting. You will see um, what I'm calling a Hall of Fame of great, Ameri of great Ohio actors. So, a lot of them, I bet you don't know, are from Ohio. Um, did anybody know Doris Day was from Ohio? You did? You're all better than I am. We got Tyrone Power. We got Clark Gable. We got Roy Rogers. He's going to get the spot as you go into the men's room. He'll <laughs> be really appreciated there. Um, but we've got Dean Martin. We've got uh, one of my favorite, Theda Barrett. You know, you all know Peter Vera? She was the original man. And uh, beautiful woman, she'll be there. Of course, the Gish sisters. Um, so that all kind of hit you as part of the history of what you're walking into. We have people all the time who come for the first time, and they're, they're amazed. 
We had a man from Atlanta who came and enjoyed the movie, came out and said, oh my God, I would give anything if Atlanta had a theater like this. And I said, well, you've got Fox. And he said, yes, we have the Fox, but you can't go in it unless you have a tuxedo on. And of course, the big movie theaters, and I'll include the Palace in this group, because they are, the Civic and Akron, they were all built not with private money the way the Lincoln was. They were built with corporate money when the movie studios decided to start building their own palaces. And they wanted you to be transported from where you were to another place. They didn't want you to come in and think, oh, look, I'm in Akron. <laughs> um, so they built the Alhambra and the Moving Skies and all those fancy things. Those kind of theaters are called atmospherics. Uh, very different from the Lincoln. The Lincoln was built as an Art Deco theater, uh, meant to be clean. You know, I always when I go to the palace, I think, God, who dusts here? <laughs> We're so old, we don't have dust anymore. <laughs> I don't know where it went, but oh, I've never seen a bug in the Lincoln, and I've never seen dust. I don't know, I think maybe it's the ghosts. They may be taking care of that dust in boats, so we feel about ghosts. Our ghosts are very friendly. Um, so don't be afraid of them. Uh, the, I, I've got 62 places I want to go with this, so I, I won't. Um, we, we find that the Lincoln, that people, a lot of, especially the children, do not have a concept of age. They think I'm old. <laughs> um, and I was feeling really good about not being old until I realized the theater's only 33 years older than I am. <laughs> happen. Um, I too was built with good material though, as were all of us, so, you know. Um, anyway, when, when I talk to people about the Lincoln, I'd like to point out that in 1915, when the theater opened, we had Civil War veterans sitting in the seats. You can still sit in those same exact seats in our balcony. Because in 1953, when Warner Brothers bought the theater, they were too cheap to replace them. <laughs> I tell people who are sitting down in the theater, you're sitting in the new seats, because they came in in 1953. Um, that usually gets a laugh, because that's not new anymore, I'm told. They are very comfortable, and the lines were good enough to spread them out, put cup holders on them, which you never see in historic theaters, um, and give you lots of floor space for your legs. Theater use was built for 1,100 seats. Now we have 640. So you have that much extra leg room. So thank you again, Lions. Um, they also, the seats used to tip down like this, and the Lions took the time to put little things on them so they sit straight now because I always used to feel like I was falling out of them. And they'd recline, which is unusual too. That was a real innovation in 53. In 53, Warner Brothers also changed the marquee. That is not our original marquee. The original has had several variations. And when you look over you know, at some of the pictures, you'll see different kinds of things up front. Now, of course, we have the digital. And I know some people in this room didn't want us to do that. I won't mention any names. But we, we were in a situation of having 83-year-old men climbing very high ladders to put the little things on that, which they were willing to do in the winter. Um, but then we got so busy doing so many different things, it was impossible. So we just had to go to digital. But I've always wondered, was it the action? Did, did people think we were going to take that old marquee down and put something totally different in? because all we did was just replace this intersection. Now we still have the old marquee, and we have the old letters, and uh, I'm going to bring them up into the outer lobby so people can you know, see how that worked, how you did that. I, I want to bring young people in, or anyone who would like to. Well, our first museum event um, will be teaching people how to splice film. 
and run it through the reel-to-reel -reel projector. Because the sound a reel-to-reel -reel projector makes is now endangered. They haven't put anything on film since 19, uh, 2013. So film doesn't exist anymore. When we get a movie, it's on a hard drive. The $75,000 digital projector is a big black box with a couple computers sticking out of it and a place you shove the hard drive in. Makes no nice noise. But the old projector, we left one upstairs just for this reason, because that, along with the sound of smell of popcorn, it's another reason why movie theaters burned down, that sound put the projectionist to sleep a lot. <laughs> Plus, I think the speakeasy may have been in the projection. <laughs> but where, whatever was going on up there, they fall asleep in movie theaters all the time. And if that projection equipment stopped for even you know two minutes, a minute, that fire would ignite it and poof. So um, we want to keep as much of the historic nature of, of uh, the theater alive. Now. Movies, we've been showing classic movies for eight years now. Yeah. Why? A lot of people didn't know why we did that. Well, yes. once the new movie theater moved into town, yes. um, there are rules and laws about what movies you can show. And if, you, if your theater's within eight miles of a first-run movie theater, and you're an independent theater, you cannot show them. And so the Lions, who had been used to having lots of people in the theater, all of a sudden, the new movie theaters hold their movies. They wouldn't release them to them. They, the ones they would release were things nobody wanted to see, and things had really gotten on hard times. So when, when I came, I, I said, well, there's only one solution. Nobody can tell us what old movies we can show. So we went to a classic film schedule, which, you know, in today's day and age, you can stay home and you know, watch a movie on television. One of the most frequently commented comments at the Lincoln is, I've seen that movie a dozen times. It was never like what I just saw. Because when you sit in a theater in the dark with other people watching something, um, you laugh out loud. Casablanca is a funny movie. I didn't know that until I saw it on the big screen. The impact of the faces um, when they go huge, you know, two faces, the whole screen, you know, that you can't get at home. After every movie we show, the audience applauds, and they're so right because these are the movies that, you know, made America great, and they're not being made anymore. Um, so that's what we've been showing. Now we're going to try and bring in. Some newer movies, there are some quality movies out there, but we have to fight the law to do it. So those of you who want to see some newer films next year, that will you know, probably be a possibility. But we need people to come to the movies. <laughs> That's really important. We can get a $2,000, we did last month, we got a $2,000 electric bill. You divide that by $5 tickets, and that's just the electric bill. We have. Um, had $6,000 gas bills in the winter. Um, that's really hard for us to make up. So we need Maslin to show up and say, I love this place, I love these theaters, it's going to cost you five bucks. For a dollar, you can come in and get our fabulous popcorn. Anybody in here had our popcorn? We smell real butter on our popcorn. And the most you can pay is three dollars, and if you buy the big tub, we refill it. So you cannot beat that, ladies. If you've got a guy with you, guys, if you like to get romantic, you can still put your arms around the lady you're with in our theater seats. I had two women come and tell me, right after we changed the classic films, that they had consummated their marriages. They were in their nineties. <laughs> In the balcony at the Lincoln. <laughs> now, now, I, I thought I was good, but uh, no way I could have done that. Um, so, 
They even pointed out the seats. So I honor those seats now. I respect the view. And those are just two who confessed. So if any of you have stories, please share them. Um, there are many stories and many memories of the Lincoln. Um, I hope I've... Anybody not been in there? Oh, couple. Couple. Well, if anybody wants to come over after the show, I'll be happy to let you in. You're going to see the, you know, we need her. It's all coming. Everything that's not good is coming, and we'll be there by November, so don't make any judgments about it. But the atmosphere in the Lincoln is amazing. It is, when I go in there in the daytime, it is the quietest place I've ever been. With 26 inches of brick between me and any sound outside, it's, it's almost a sacred place. I think I did the math before. This may be different now. The Lincoln has survived seven major wars, 16 presidencies. Um, when, when the theater opened, women couldn't vote. Uh, it was not until you know, almost 10 years later that women could vote. Um, the, the young men in there were going to go off to World War I. They didn't know it yet, but Europe had already exploded. The, during World War II, the Lincoln was instrumental in raising hundreds of thousands of dollars for the war effort through selling war bonds and stamps and things at the theater. Uh, it's been at the center of Nelson for a very long time, and my dream is that 200 years from now, people are thanking those of us who kept it there for them. Because there's no reason John McClain's building can't survive. The historic, pure, or the historic architects came, looked through the theater, they begged to come. I said, well, okay. They, we looked through the theater, they came back upstairs after about three hours of wandering around and said, we have never seen a building of any era built of this quality. Whoever built this building was thinking like the pyramid builders. He wanted it to stay. And that's exactly what we're about doing, keeping it there, and why we need you all to help. So um, we hope you'll do that. Now, maybe you have a question. Anybody got a question now? Yes? Was that McLean, McLean Grocery? Piece? Yes, McLean Grocery. I uh, talked to Jackie down there. She married into the family. <coughs> Smart woman. She's, she's also trying to find a picture, but I, I told her, just let's just pick out a, a man of the era. <laughs> I want a plaque. I want to honor him somehow in the theater. So if anyone's got a particularly distinguished ancestor. <laughs> yes. Yeah. The Mark Keogh plaque. What supports that? Is it safe the way in this day and age? Oh yes, yes, and we just had the roof redone on it, so we just had people out on it. Again, we can see that from the inside of the building. And if you'd like to come up and look at it after the meeting, I'd be happy to let you look out the window. I noticed you have three steel rods that are molded. Right, right which are going into steel beams. Right. So it's it's very secure. I mean, to the best of our knowledge, so it falls down. But we're not aware of it being anything but as secure as the building. Mark Key got steel in it? Yes. 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 Yeah, we, we thought about putting a little uh, dance floor out there on top of the marquee. <laughs> I have a lot of ideas. I thought a nice roof garden on the top. If anybody's got a lot of money, leave it to the Lincoln and I'll spend it for you. Um, Okay, anybody else? Yes. Yeah. Well, I'm going to, I'll get there. Uh, you said they uh, changed all the seats in 1953? Yes. Uh, any idea of whatever happened to the old seats? What, what happened to the old seats? They just, they just got rid of them? The old seats downstairs, you know, because yeah. they're still upstairs. Yeah, I know that. I mean, downstairs, I have, I'm, I'm going to guess Warner Brothers, being Warner Brothers, would have taken them to some other theater that they either owned or, you know, they would have sold them 
in the market. They wouldn't destroy them. No, but they're probably gone by now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't know. They may have just come in and put them on the garbage. Yeah. You never know. Um, if I could time travel, I would. That's why we're having a speakeasy for the party. Yeah, and your hindsight's always 20 Yeah, right. Somebody threw away the building plans. So, you know, <laughs> lots of things have been thrown away. I'm left with a couple things that I really treasure. Yeah. You didn't mention a bank night. Bank night, yeah. Oh, a bank, well, of course, bank nights were a staple, but you, you still a quiz. Had the, you still had the cards there in the early 70s, didn't you? Uh, the basement of the, uh, the, 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 the card registered, uh, people that joined the bank club? I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe in the 70s. I see, because <coughs> Warner Brothers threw some things away, and I'm not saying anything bad about this, but the Lions threw some, away some things, too, so... What we have left is all I know of. But I'm sure, I mean, you should see our basement. It is full of stuff. I wouldn't be surprised. Well, this is the claim we're still in the end. It's early 70s. Oh, okay. My son was supposed to be a uh -huh. And I was down in underneath with all of them. Yes, no. They had all the membership yeah. that I wanted. Yeah. So well, nice. that's ushers or another thing. Anybody ever work at the Lincoln? Because if anybody can find us an Usher costume, I would love to have it. Or even a picture of one. It was just <laughs> I, I would just love to have one, to. I mean, we could recreate it if we even had a picture. So if anyone, I, somebody told me they had a brother in Florida who had one, still had it. I beg you to bring it to us, but it hasn't shown up yet. So. If anyone's got a picture, I'm sure they were orange. Oh, I know. I think I remember a little kind of round cam. My first movie at the Lincoln um, was um, The Robe that I remember. I, like the rest of us of my age, went to the West one, you know. Um, but you aged into the Lincoln. You know, the better movies were at the Lincoln. It was always the most expensive to go to the Lincoln. Tickets even. In 1915, they were the most expensive movie tickets in Nassau. And there were other movie theaters, um, little ones. But um, the Grand. The Grand, yeah. How many of you remember the Grand? Because I don't remember it, and I should. That we have pictures, because um, clearly it had a marquee like ours, so it was, you know, after 53, it's still there. You know, I grew up in Maslin, but I have no memory of it. But we have great stories people bring in. Yeah. Oh, five minutes, thank you. Great stories people bring in about catching the rats of the Grand. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently it was not well maintained. <laughs> so they, they, they like to nibble on their feet and stuff. Um, so, okay, more questions. Who, who, somebody down here have a question? Oh, back there. Yes. What was the John's wife's name? I'm going to have to defer to what was John's wife's name? You don't know. <laughs> Mrs. McLean. <laughs> That's what everyone's name was. <laughs> Did they give you money? Yeah. You want money at bank night? Well, we still do a 50-50, so let's call it bank night. Uh, and then the dish night. There was always you could get dishes and stuff. Everybody was different. Now, movies went into a terrible decline in the 1950s. 
um, when television came out and the movies didn't weren't so good anymore. You saw a real trend there with movies falling off. Um, after the war, movie theaters were paying a, a big excise tax all through the war on every ticket that was sold that went directly to the war. And that didn't get taken away after the war, so that was causing problems. They were having to keep that in their price schedule. Um, so the 1950s television, movie theaters closed everywhere. Um, then the problem was they were built on prime land everywhere. You know, they were in downtowns on really expensive land. So in the 60s, they were torn down to make room for new buildings. Um, and in the 70s, the only way movie theaters could survive, and the League of American Theaters credits one thing for saving the historic theaters that are still in America, and that's porno. <laughs> <laughs> the Lincoln didn't have to do that. But um, we have had our share of tough times, so um, it is a survivor like all the others, and we hope you value it. And I just can't imagine downtown without it. So, any other things I can do quick? Yeah. Um, you mentioned that the screen was originally made of gold. Did yes. they then switch to silver? Is that where they yes. got the name silver? Screens today have silver in them. Yeah, and the reason movies are complex is because they flipped in front of the flame. So, um, yeah. I, to me, the movie industry and the movies that were produced are the history of America. Not so much because of what really happened, because we know they changed that a lot, but because of how they thought America wanted to see itself. Um, you look at a movie like Grapes of Wrath. Grapes of Wrath was finished, was actually in the can before World War II started, but it was decided when World War II started that they had to go back and redo the ending because it was kind of a depressing ending since it was about the Depression. So they went back and refilmed a very positive, it's America, we can do anything kind of ending for it, which is what people needed to see. They didn't need to be reminded of what had come before. They had to be planning for next time. And every classic movie we have, um, on the waterfront we showed, um, that's how the government was forced into looking at crime and labor unions. It was that movie. It was such an uproar after that movie that the Kefauver hearings started and that things started to change. So movies have changed America in many ways. And to not know our classic movies is like just not knowing our culture. Because America is credited with only two forms of culture created by this country. One is jazz and the other is the American movie. So very important to us, and these movies are <laughs> So any other questions on quick? Yes? When did John McClain die? I don't know. I think I just asked you that question. <laughs> and you said you didn't know either. Oh no, before. Because I thought we might find it in the um, um, obituaries in the independent archives. It's, you get in free to the, uh, the first person who brings me a picture of John McClain gets in free to the party. So <laughs> we'll be announcing uh, early in October everything that's going to be happening. We have a website, lionslinkintheater.com, where you can sign up, buy tickets, do whatever. Uh, and you can always find out what's on at the movie. So uh, I, I've memorized all your faces. <laughs> and I will expect to see you. Thank you very much. <laughs>